are YouTubers. You thought you was going to see the casual viewer? Well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. The casual viewer was constipated and he got some... What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on, YouTubers? It is your boy, Deluxe Man, and that is the... Casual Viewer. And he is back to help me review WWE Extreme Rules 2014. As always, guys, subscribe, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, check out everything down below in the description box. Don't we have a certain channel we like to plug? You know, with the whole podcast going on? Mm. Let's go ahead and just put that out there. You just never know. I mean, if you want to go ahead and put it out there for our viewers. Well, if I remember, it's called Truffle Bottoms. Truffle Bottoms. And, and what is the name of the podcast, by the way? Adaptations. Adaptations. Boys and girls. <laughs> Boys and girls. <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies out there. Um, your boy, Delex Man, is also involved in a group called Adaptations, where we review movies that have been based on books. It's books transitions into movies, pretty much. And we have a few um, videos up already yes, to go do. check out. Mm -hmm. So, if you like to hear me talk about other stuff besides wrestling, please go subscribe to that channel. Anything you want to say about that? I think you said it all. All right. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and get into our little review, starting off with the pre-show match. The WLC match, midgets, L tables, mm. ladders, and chairs. Uh -huh. Hornswoggle versus El Torito. What do you think about this? This comedy classic. Okay, let's just. Let, <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let me just make this clear. Okay. We did not rate this match. What's the point? <laughs> it obviously was a joking type of match. Yeah. I will say that. My favorite was the bull. Yeah. However, okay, let me, okay. I'm just going to be real mm -hmm. with you on this. Go ahead. I do not mind the idea of little people fighting in a match. Yeah. I don't fight, I don't mind them fighting in the WWE. I mean, the idea is funny the, at least. Yeah. It, it ain't even about funny. It's just about <laughs> the fact that it's like, oh, well, he's a wrestler. They're both wrestlers, but they're little people. Okay. Fine. Go for it. That's great. Yeah. But then, but then when they have little people commentators, <laughs> and then when they have little people chairs, announcers, <laughs> and little people announcers, little people chairs, little tables, people tables, ladders. little people ladders, it it just it just kind of it's like you guys are like going to the line of whatever ism is against short people. I will say this about WWE. I respect the fact that they went all the way with this midget match. And oh I mean God. all the way with the midget match. With the commentators, with the announcer, with the tables, the ladders, and the chairs. Everything was midget. We didn't rate the match. It was a comedy match. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you loved it. Believe it or not, people actually enjoyed this match. Hey, I'm not saying it was a bad match. I'm just looking at it like, yeah. is this a tad offensive? <laughs> Isn't this a tad going too far? See, this is the type of match I expect on the pre-show. Eh, yeah. You know. Yeah, I, yeah, I will. A match it. that usually shouldn't be presented on the pay-per-view, but it's, it's still, still entertaining. Yeah. See, that's that's what I expect out of a pre-show is that it's one of those if you miss it, no big deal, but when you see it, it's good. Exactly. So we're not gonna rate it, but we felt like it had its place and it served it pretty well. And it was entertaining in a lot of places, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But still, we held see match. I wouldn't necessarily go back and watch it again, would you? Nah. All right, main card time. First match we had was the triple threat match. Elimination triple threat match. Which was not informed. Apparently the commentators didn't know about it. Okay. <laughs> but it was Rob Van Dam versus the King of Swing. Cesaro uh -huh. and Jack Swagger. We, we the, the people. people. I thought it was a really good match. Yeah. I had no issues with it. It was okay. You thought it was okay? I thought it was okay, but honestly, me, look, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention, but when the first guy got pinned, I thought, okay, match is over, we're moving on. And then there's something about, oh, it's elimination. And I'm like, 
<laughs> so that's how this goes. But I've seen matches like this. And usually it's whoever pins whoever first wins and we're done. But okay. No issues with me. I'm just happy Cesaro is getting presented in a very strong fashion. That's all I care about. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Now that Cesaro has broken up from the Real Americans yeah. and he's with Paul Heyman. Yeah. Um, people have been speculating if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Mm -hmm. They may say he's a good guy because the fans love him, but he's associated with Paul Heyman, who is constantly reminding people that my client, Brock Lesnar, defeated The Undertaker's streak. And he's the most hated, annoying son of a bitch because of that. Mm -hmm. So in your eyes, how do you see Cesaro? Good guy or bad guy? I see him, honestly, as a good guy. But Me too. It's, I mean, because it's kind of a slippery slope. Because if anything, he's kind of an anti-hero where he's a good guy, but he's going about things the wrong way because of the company he keeps. Right. Except, technically, him being a part of the Real Americans wasn't really him being a villain. Right. Either. So, right. and him working for Paul Heyman? Yes. That's, it's more like, well, Paul Heyman's a dick, but that doesn't make Cesaro. Exactly. Work. So, you know. And he doesn't cheat. He wins his matches cleanly. He isn't insulting, well, he's not, like, being a dick about it. Yeah. You no, know, he's going out there, wrestling fairly, playing the competition. So, I mean, he's associated with a heel, but that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean he's a heel. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But that is a debate that they can have down there in the comment section. How do you guys feel about Cesaro? Next match is Alexander Rusev, the Bulgarian Brute, taking on R-Truth and Xavier Woods. Uh -huh. I will say this Lana is hot Yay That has nothing to do With the match But she is hot though I, I, I'm just saying <laughs> anyway. Rusev I like I want to see more Of his Athletic ability uh -huh. Apparently Because he has a lot of it You don't see big men Like him Jumping around And doing awesome moves Like a spinning heel kick Oh Okay the way that they presented him, I was not surprised that he was able to do that move. When yeah. they explained his entire fighting background, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Hell, I mean, he's not even the biggest guy in the whole show. Right. Uh, you know, in the whole league. Not, not league. Yeah. And so, you know, I wasn't really surprised at that, but honestly, I was not impressed with this match whatsoever. It was a squash it, match. It was nice to see our truth because I was like, <laughs> oh, he's still around. That's... That's, that's good. I wonder what's going to happen as a result of this match. Are we going to see some dissension between R-Truth and um, Xavier Woods? Because since they've been together, they haven't really won any matches. Mm -hmm. So you would think because of that, someone would snap. Whoa. You would think. I don't know. Me, I'm, I'm just at... I don't think... If anything comes of this, it's not going to be earth-shattering. I guess. I guess what I really want is for R-Truth to go back to his crazy gimmick... Before you came, our truth was a bad guy, mm -hmm. and he had this psycho crazy gimmick where he would go around calling invisible friends Little Jimmy. I will show you videos of that later. Okay. But those of you who know what I'm talking about, I bet you're excited about that too. Bring back Little Jimmy. Hashtag Little Jimmy. Hashtag Little Jimmy. But uh, Rusev won. Are you shocked? No. Me either. Two stars. Fair enough. Two stars. And, and the opening match was, was three stars. Three stars? Yeah. Okay. Next up is the IC Intercontinental Championship match between Big E and Bad News Barrett. Those of you out there who thought Big E was going to retain the championship, well, nope. I'm afraid I've got, got some, some bad news. news. Way Barrett actually beats Big E Langston and is the new Intercontinental Champion for the fourth time fourth time this is his fourth time getting it yeah the story of him as IC champion isn't a pretty one uh -huh. his first one is very forgettable okay. his second one ended on the pre-show of Wrestlemania and then he got it back the very next night on Raw and then he lost it to who did he lose it to I don't remember who he lost it to okay. that's, that's how bad my memory is I'm sorry hmm. If y'all can remember who he lost it to, let me know. Wow, I can't remember who he lost it to. Anyway. Anyways, 
He got it back the fourth time. Mm -hmm. And I think this time around it's going to be a lot better because now he has a character. Now he's actually going out there and beating people. Yeah, now he has a, a yeah. gimmick. Like he has a gimmick. Way. And he's actually getting over. The audience loves him. The audience was behind Wade Barrett tonight. And he was the bad guy here. He was. He told the audience that a virus was going to come and make them all sick. Yeah. <laughs> and they still loved him. They completely booed Big E. Mm. And that's a result of him not being booked. When was the last time you saw this guy? I don't even know who this Exactly. Guy. Okay. That's the last time we saw him. Okay. And he's the IC champion. And as a result, people just don't care about him anymore. Hmm. And so they got behind a guy that was more relevant, and that was apparently Bad News Barrett. So hopefully because of his gimmick, because he's a lot more relevant, and because the fans are behind him, obviously, because he even had the crowd clappy with him and stuff like that. Bad hmm. news. Bad news. Maybe he'll be a more better IC champion this time around. I guess. What are your thoughts about the match, about Bad News Barrett and blah, blah, blah? I like Bad News Barrett, but that's because he, I, it's just he got that memorable thing of, I got some bad news. He has a catchphrase. He has a catchphrase and the thing. It was like what we were talking about earlier where it was annoying when he just, after every match, just showed up like, yeah. I got some bad news. Well, he was just going out there on the podium and cutting some stupid <laughs> stuff. It didn't go anywhere. He didn't have any matches. It didn't matter. But now that he's actually backing up his words and beating people, Former world champions, by the way. Yeah, it's a lot more easy to get behind, you know? Yep, because now he's bringing some bad news to his opponents. Exactly. So, yeah. How, how excited are you for his championship run? You think it's going to be good? Well, I hope it's going to be you good. Think it's, you think it's hope it's good. Well, because it's like, let me just put it this way. I would like to see his persona, career, whatever, actually go somewhere. His stock rise. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Because... It's because it's annoying when there's like, oh, we don't have any good wrestlers anymore. It's like, no, you have good wrestlers. You just don't know how to use them. Exactly. You know, what you need to do is like, you got this going on, keep it going. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, you got a lot of good wrestlers right now, but just because they're not popular right now doesn't mean you can't still use them somehow or change their persona up, make them relevant. Yeah. Or something. But hey. They're catching on to Bad News Barrett. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Period? Yeah. Period. Evolution versus The Shield. Now, me Why? and the casual viewer kind of have a disagreement about this Here match. Here we go. Here we go? Mm hmm He thought the match was... I thought the match was... I actually really enjoyed this match. I thought it was pretty freaking cool. But I want to hear your thoughts on it first. How do you feel about this match and why do you feel it was I yeah. give it a three because honestly it's like okay here's my okay here's my real main like my top three reasons why I wasn't really invested is one last time I checked the shield were supposed to be breaking up with each other <laughs> so now we just squashed that storyline all together and now they're back to fighting for justice and, yeah. and stuff like that so, okay, so we're just going to forget. I guess they hugged it out. I guess. Whatever. Then it's Team Evolution. I have no idea who these guys... I mean, I know who each of them are individually, but I never knew that they were a team yeah. before. Yeah, he wasn't around when they were actually dominating the WWE back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I didn't know that they were the precursor of The Shield, let me just say. Pretty much. And so when I'm seeing that they're all together, all I keep thinking of is like, wait a minute, weren't you two fighting each other... Last week at WrestleMania. at WrestleMania, and weren't you dickheads fighting each other last to the last month? And weren't you, at, you know, <laughs> they had common enemy in the shield, yeah. But you know, it's it's just that whole oh wait, so you guys used to work together, but you fought against each other, but now you're gonna work again with each other again. And I thought Triple H was done. I thought he was the like part of the. I thought he was the suits. Yeah. And all that. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like it when I see Triple H fight, but it's just the whole explanation of it's like, dude, are you just in the suit so you can still stay relevant in the show? But when you feel like it, I'm going to fight whenever you do, you know, whenever it's called for. I guess. Because I thought it was just supposed to, no, you're suit and tie. You're done. I guess not. I guess not. And then you just fight for special occasions. Now it's like, 
oh, I guess he just got tired of the suit and now is going <laughs> to wrestle just whenever. Well, what's your third reason, though? What about the match itself? Okay, well, the match itself, I was not, you know, when I've seen everything, it wasn't exactly that enthralling or exciting. I mean, compared to, like, the Wyatt versus the Shield match, Elimination Chamber, that match. Yeah, but at least with them, I actually know who the Wyatts are. Okay. And there was so much buildup on why they were fighting. Right. And in this one, I was, like, watching them fight, and then they even took it outside the ring, which was entertaining in its own right, but all I kept thinking of when all this stuff was happening, when four of the members were out fighting each other, was like, well, since you guys are nowhere near the ring and the other two are, this doesn't really count for anything. Right. This looks cool, but it doesn't matter what you guys are doing unless you're getting back to this ring. But these two are still in the <laughs> ring and fighting right now. So, <laughs> you know, so that's why, that's the third reason why I wasn't invested because, like, as... As cool as that looks. <laughs> on paper. On paper. Yeah. You still... <laughs> the execution didn't really live up to the hype. It, for me, because you still got two people in the ring. It's not like there's they could wake up any time and do the thing. Here's my thing. I do think the match could have used a stipulation. Maybe like Extreme Rules or Hardcore mm -hmm. or something like that. Maybe that would have actually made it a little bit more interesting for you. But for me, I'm going to say it like this. I love Evolution. I was around when it was around, and I love the shield. I do agree that based off of the storyline, them breaking up would have made sense. It probably should have happened, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I love them right now. Uh, I'm a big fan of Roman Reigns. That guy gets me so freaking hyped after he hits the Superman punch, and he just gets mm, 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 ah! it's so awesome. I just like it. Okay, it's, it's invigorating. And then Seth Rollins the. Uh, High flying, sky riding, death defying Seth Rollins is jumping from place to place to place. It's really awesome. And then mm. Dean Ambrose's crazy self. That little um, rope bouncing clothesline that he does for Nigel McGuinness, you have no idea who that is. That's uh, okay, but they do. <laughs> um, but that is so freaking awesome. Dude, I understand that the Shield eventually has to break up. I know it does. Mm -hmm. But I am not going to be mad if they keep them together for at least until SummerSlam mm -hmm. and then break them up. Couldn't hurt, right? I mean, why why not? Because don't mention something. Because <laughs> I mean, don't mention a story arc to then just push it. it yeah, and don't finish clock. it. And yeah. don't finish it. Because me, look, if they break up, fine, that's great. But it's like it's like someone wrote this like, yeah, we're gonna do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I got a better idea. Let's just have them fight some some other three on three tag team match. You know then, what I think happened. Mm -hmm. The crowd got into them too much, and they got cold feet and pulled back on it. Uh, I guess. That's what happened. I mean, I understand that type uh -huh. of booking, though. But the match to me was actually really good. I love seeing you know, them go outside the ring and fight and brawl, go over the place. The style for the match, I understood it. Because Triple H, uh, Batista, and Randy Orton, they're not fast-paced workers. They're mm -hmm. slow, methodical, and they have a certain pace that they wrestle. Mm -hmm. So I understood that. And then, of course, when the Shield got the advantage, they took it to a faster pace, mm -hmm. if you notice that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm used to that type of contrast in styles. Um, but I love seeing the Shield win. That's what sold it for me. The mm -hmm. Shield beat Evolution. Do you understand how big of a fucking deal that is? They beat a stable of 31 World Championship reigns. Mm -hmm. Those three are made. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose are future main eventers as a result of this match. They, they have to be. Who do you know can say they beat Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton? Wait, besides Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah uh-huh, I almost got you. But <laughs> yeah. Like I said, me, I'm going to have to take your word for it on that one. Yeah. me, I'm like, I understand how impressive it is to beat those three. Mm. Except except for the fact that you know it's in you know it's just that whole thing again where well why did y'all break up if you guys were so strong right. and then why did you guys get back together because it almost seems like you guys got back together because y'all have lost right and i'm not saying those cracks still don't exist mm -hmm. for all we know they can bring it right back 
up near SummerSlam. Yeah. And then one of them can want to break up for one another and they have a match against each other at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Yeah. But for right now, I'm not mad yeah. that they broke up. Yeah. So I'm giving this match a four star. He's giving it three stars. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But we both agree that this match is a four star match. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt in a steel cage match. Yeah, the whole world <laughs> in his hands. That video package was amazing. It was awesome. The storyline going into this match, apparently, is that Bray Wyatt does not care if he loses or wins against John Cena. What he cares about he is getting in his head and stealing his thunder and taking away um, his, fans. his fans. That's what he wants. He wants to be the leader of John Cena's nation, pretty much. He wants to be the cult leader of all of us. And he got that tonight. That ending to the match, let's just go straight to the ending. Mm. When John Cena was going to exit the cage, we got this kid on the microphone. Okay, okay, and, let's just set the stage. Okay. Yeah. Through the whole match, John Cena or uh, Wyatt was trying to get out of the cage. Right. And he kept getting bumped back in by the other brothers. Eventually, right. John Cena got all the brothers in the cage and knocked out, and then he tried to leave. The lights cut off, and then you hear the song, He's Got the Whole oh. World in His Hand, sung with a demonic type of tone yeah. by a child. Once you, once you see the kid and see John Cena's reaction, Brain Wyatt gets up, Grabs John Cena, smacks him down, and wins. Sister Abigail. And he yeah, that's, yeah, that's... One, that two, was. three. It was awesome. Well, no, then he escapes the cage. He didn't uh, well, him. yeah. Well, I mean, he did hit him, and then... Yeah. I'm assuming... Well... Yeah, yeah he, he escaped walked, the cage. And he escaped the cage and just walked out, and then... Yay. But me, it was just the whole idea that... Because when I saw the lights go out and that video thing that they do... I was like thinking, what does that mean? Does what that mean, now? Does yeah. that mean they can just get back up? Yeah. Did they recover? <laughs> Did they just escape? Like the Undertaker or something? Yeah. So I was like, what happened? I will say this about the match. This is like my only small nitpick. This is a small nitpick about the match. Why did it take all of that for John Cena to lose? <laughs> it took interference from both of the Wyatt family members. It took a kid mm -hmm. to get inside John Cena's head. It took all of this mess, and I'm not gonna say it's mess. It was elaborate setup, I guess, mm -hmm. to beat John Cena and get inside his head. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we can play this up as just a big setup because the idea was for Bray Wyatt not to win the match. He can care less if John Cena beats him. Mm -hmm. All he cares about is stealing John Cena's fans. Yeah. You know, and making him out to be a false idol, apparently. So you can play that up as part of his pr uh, plan. But at the same time, looking at it from a wrestling perspective, mm -hmm. it's like, Jesus Christ, it took all of that for Bray Wyatt to beat John Cena in a cage match. Cage match, folks. And I bet you a lot of fans are just ready to complain about this match. It's like, why does Super Cena always have to, you know, be so difficult to beat. Why couldn't Bray Wyatt just pin him inside the ring and stuff like that? Guarantee you. You'll see that in the comment section. Well. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh oh. We actually talked about this a few episodes ago, okay. like a long time ago, about this whole thing. And you were. You brought up a point that you don't like the fact that when it comes to John Cena, that they're not giving him any challenges. Okay. And now they are. Yeah. Now they're given. Now they pretty much gave him his obstacle, which is the Wyatt family. Yeah. And first it was, oh, is he going to be tempted to break the rules? Now it's pretty much a whole uh, gauntlet of fighting. If you're supposed to, because apparently on Monday or on the previous episode that wasn't on pay per view, he the fans chose they had to fight all three. Yeah. At once. Then he's only have to fight Brain Wyatt, but there's constantly interference with even the kid doing that creepy stuff so it's like oh no he's being challenged physically mentally men and mentally now yeah so theoretically this is technically what you wanted yeah it is and ideally this kind of does work yeah because in the end like you said it's not 
it, he could care less of winning. He just likes screwing with people. And he just likes causing, uh, Bray Wyatt, I mean. Yeah. He likes causing damage. And that's what he's doing. And that's what kind of makes Bray Wyatt the ultimate adversary to John Cena. Mm -hmm. Because now it's no longer about just wrestling. It's about destroying you and your career. And the more Bray Wyatt is around John Cena, the more fans he takes away from him. Whether he wins the match or loses the match. And that is a very interesting storyline. Because mm -hmm. now it's like, okay, how does John Cena overcome this guy? Mm -hmm. Because you can beat him all you want. It's not going to matter. Yep. Bray Wyatt is still going to be, um, he's still becoming that monster, the big elephant in the room that you just can't take down. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, hopefully the WWE doesn't screw this up. Because <laughs> Bray Wyatt is becoming more and more and more and more popular as a result of this feud. Right. So... And I guarantee you they're going to have with at least one more match. Because they're one in one. You saw his WrestleMania win. Yeah. He beat him here at Extreme Rules. So mm. they might have one more at Payback. Yeah. Might. We'll see. We shall see. Four stars? Four stars. Diva Championship match. Why? Paige versus Tamiya Snuka. Why? <laughs> hey, I like Paige. Okay. But I will say this in your defense. I am not pleased that the WWE has not given her a lot of microphone time or mm -hmm. segments to let the fans know who the hell this woman is. Mm -hmm. I know who she is. She came from that NXT show I told you about, Next Generation. <laughs> mm. <laughs> she okay. came from that show. And okay. I saw her there and I know what she's all about. Okay. But unless you watch that show, you wouldn't know about her. You wouldn't know about her. And that's an issue. The WWE needs to get this woman some TV time, some segments, something to let the audience know who the hell she is so they can get invested into her. Because she's a good wrestler. You saw that. And I want to say this too. Those of you complaining to WWE about getting good quality female wrestling matches, you're getting it with Paige. All right. I don't want to see anybody complaining about, oh, the Divas matches are three seconds, one minute. No. The matches are five to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And they're actual good wrestling. So I don't want to see any complaints. At least appreciate that with Paige. I can understand her character. Mm -hmm. I can understand characters, period, when it comes to Divas. Yeah. But in terms of match quality, you got to give it to Paige. Anyways, I thought it was good. Paige won with the uh, modified Scorpion Cross Lock. That's what it's called. Ah, well, that was impressive. That was so how do you feel about the match and Paige and stuff like that? Uh, okay. Well, I'm pretty sure your fans know my feelings of the Divas match because it's not, it's not a sexist thing at all. Mm -hmm. If anything, I would like to see. I just I want to see wrestlers like China. You know, you miss China that much. It's not really that much. It's just when I think Divas, she's like the first woman that comes to mind when I think of what the Divas represent. Right. As a female wrestler, she kind of first pops in as a casual person. That's who pops up. And me, when I look at this, the first thing I thought is, what happened to AJ? <laughs> you had to tell me some back, back, uh, you know, you know, uh, backstage stuff that's going on. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. But what about character-wise? Character-wise, she just lost her title and she's gone into hibernation, psychotic hibernation. Uh -huh. But in real life, she's screwing around with seeing if I can get ready to marry him. Uh -huh. And she's probably going to be in the honeymoon. So, there right. you go. There you go. And so, you know, me, I just thought, all right, well, there it is. And then and then with these two, I don't I don't know anything about them. And for and for and for them to only have one match in the pay-per-view, it's hard for me to well, to and to also, Tamina got this match from a random battle royal on main event that's not even on TV. It was on the network that hardly anybody saw. So, exactly. Okay. And one more thing before we move on to the main event. All right. The reason why Paige is getting these matches is so people can know more about her, apparently. That's uh -huh. the report on these matches. Now... I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> uh -huh. They know she's a good wrestler, but I want to see her in segments and promos and interacting with people. That's how people will get to know who she is. Right. Don't you agree? I do. Okay. So, three stars. Not bad. Three. Maybe that time. Mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan versus Kane for the WWE Championship. Yeah. 
any extreme rules match. I am happy this main event at the show. I was very worried that this was going to open up the show because of how it was built up. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that the WWE is respecting Daniel Bryan as the WWE champion and putting him in the main event. Unlike they did with CM Punk, who didn't main event the show a lot when he was WWE champion. Mm -hmm. But Daniel Bryan is different, apparently. Very good match. I really enjoyed this one. Well, I I understand why he would be the main event. Yeah. But, you know, it's the whole idea. It's like, it sounds mean, but it's like, look, they got a good thing going with the whole Yes movement yeah. and the Daniel Bryan thing. So they're trying to keep it that way by keeping him as the main event mm. and stuff until something else more popular comes up. But me, I enjoyed the match, even though the first act was it was slow, but it built up to something really cool. And then the second act, which was awesome, when they took it out of the ring and was throwing each other on cars <laughs> and picking each other up on forklifts. And breaking and, car windows and, and stuff. And yeah. all that stuff. That was awesome. Yeah. If it was the finale of the entire match. Right. But it wasn't. Because right. then the third act was like, okay, so we're back to this. But we got a flaming table. <laughs> Yay. I'm sorry, but me, the forklift was got kind of the bit. He beat him up, put him on a forklift, dropped him in the ring. And then did a head And bite. then jumped from that pallet on the forklift on top of him. Yeah, with a flying head, but that was yeah. pretty cool. I'll agree. I'll agree with you on that one, too. <laughs> it felt like an old school hardcore match to me. There was a thing back in the day called the 24 hour hardcore championship, where if you had the championship, you had to defend it on the hour, every hour, every day. And they did this thing where a guy named Crash Holly, who was champion, would be sleeping. And some wrestlers would, you know, stalk him mm -hmm. and pin him while he was sleeping. And that would still count as a championship win. Uh, oh God. All you had to have was a referee. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. it wasn't like this, but it reminded me of that. It was a very fun, you know, good main event for the show. And Daniel Bryan ended up beating Kane. After putting him through a flaming table, it was awesome. Of course, Kane sat back up, and apparently this is probably going to continue until payback, so who knows? My Gary match. Oh, okay. That brings me to my next thing. Oh, yeah. Last time I checked, Kane was scared the same <laughs> by the Wyatt family. Yeah. He put a suit and tie and put the mask away. And I thought, you know what? That's cool. That's actually interesting. It makes the wife have more of a threat. Whatever. But now, all of a sudden, you can, whenever you feel like it, put the mask back on, be crazy again. And he's a monster. And now he's a monster and really strong again. And it makes me wonder, well, what happened then? If it, it would make sense to me if, like, he had like a multiple personality thing where, without the mask, he's just a regular person. But when he puts it on. He's stronger and crazy, or it, the mask makes him insane. I don't know. Right, because then there's power behind the mask. Yeah. You can use that. Okay. And you can use that as a thing. Hell, you can even use that in the match, where it's like they take the mask off and now he's weaker or something. I don't know. But it's just, I just get conf not confused, but I just don't understand why is he super strong now when he wasn't when he fought the Wyatt family? Well, when you figure it out, let us know. Okay. Because we're right there with him. All right. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I've been enjoying it. The only thing I didn't enjoy was the segment where he tried to kidnap Brie Bella. She's not a very good actor. Mm. What they didn't show you in that video package is that Brie Bella was outside the ring when he was beating up Daniel Bryan, mm -hmm. and she climbed back inside the ring <laughs> to check on Bryan. And then she kind of rolled away from Kane. And we're thinking, like, so did you not think that Kane was going to go after you again? Mm -hmm. Because he tried to go after you before. Why would you climb back inside the ring? That's what people died for in horror films, Brie Bella. Mm. You have to see it. It was crazy. Oh, and Stephanie McMahon. That insincere uh, bundle of mess. Yeah, I, I, just, I just ignore her. He's awesome as a bad guy. Well, I mean, she would be. If <laughs> oh man! It, I mean, she would be if she. I am not entertained by this type of villain because you know that she's full of it. Yeah. <laughs> so me, you just kind of come into it like, yeah, you're full of crap. So I'm not even gonna bother listening to anything you have to say. It would be a different story on the other hand if like 
she actually did do stuff for the people's side but it somehow turned out to be in her favor but you but the audience knew but not the wrestlers in general right like if there was one of those like oh i really want you to win and then they win and then she's like says something about it's like oh our plans are going the things are going exactly as we planned now on to phase eight i don't know no oh, that's crazy it's, but um overall show was good wasn't as good as WrestleMania 30 by far. <laughs> no, it was nowhere close to WrestleMania 30. But it was still a good show. And I felt like all matches delivered. If you're not a fan of the WLC match, we understand. Mm -hmm. But the other matches, nothing below three stars here. I don't think so. Except for the squash match between Rusev and Xavier Woods and our truth But that was a squash match. That was harmless. I guess, but me, there shouldn't be a squash match. There's, I mean, it's one of the. There's a difference between oh, this is a match that's that we know sucks, but we're just gonna put it in anyway. Versus this was the least entertaining match of the card. Okay. You know what I mean? I like they're that. all entertaining, but they're but this particular one wasn't as good. Not eh. Well, what can you expect? It was no. Okay. <laughs> well, next pay per view is called Payback, and it's gonna be in Chicago, Illinois which is the hometown of one named CM Punk. And everybody is speculating, and we'll end the video with this, that Punk will return at that pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? And honestly, at this point in time, do you really care if CM Punk comes back or not? Honestly, I do. Oh, okay. It's one of those things where I understand why he left. Yeah. I totally understand why he would leave. And I totally understand why WWE would want him back. Mm -hmm. And honestly, regardless of his decision, I will I back up his decision mm -hmm. because I understand. Right. However, it would be nice to see him come back though. Yeah, because he was a really good character, or the and char a really good wrestler. He was a re he he is a good wrestler. Yeah, and the character and the character CM Punk is a good persona. Right. So for that to just go on the wayside because people can't come to an agreement on something, it's just, it would be disappointing. Absolutely. So me, I would love to see him come back. However, I do not believe it is going to be the Chicago thing. Because right. just because it's in your hometown doesn't mean squat about coming back. Okay, so you think he's going to come back, but not at the next pay-per-view. I hope he comes back, okay. but I do not believe he's going to be in the next pay-per-view. Okay. But I could be wrong. All right. I'm right there with you, honestly. Okay. That's kind of how I feel about it. I okay. think payback is a good time for him to come back. But if he doesn't come back, I'm not going to lose my mind over it. It's just, it's his life. He's already been world champion. As a matter of fact, if he wants to call it a day today, he can. What else does he have to do besides well, no, but see, main that, event WrestleMania? Yeah. But see, that's my point, too. It's, it's the whole idea where if he were to quit right now, I would totally understand and would not bitch about it. Right. I mean, would not complain about it. Mm -hmm. However, are you done or not? <laughs> Cause make a decision. Let us know. Yeah. Because I mean, seriously, somebody. I mean, maybe he's being kept quiet, or maybe he's just taking some off time. Whatever. I just. It just would be nice to know, like, officially, are you done, or are you coming back, or is this another WWE play where it's like, is he coming back or not? Thing. Well, we, I would like a decision soon. How about that? No. Okay. This is your boy, Deluxe Man. And the casual viewer signing out. Peace out.